Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm glad to see you here tonight. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday uh, midweek service. Why don't we stand together and we'll get into the word of the Lord. Let's turn to Psalm 139. And rather than read the entire thing, uh, I am assured that you all do not mind if I do not take an hour to deliver uh, my message. And so I'm going to see if I can't make this less than an hour. I keep promising this, and it's been two years now, but one of these days, one of these days, Psalm 139, instead of reading the entire chapter, I just want to read verses 17 and 18. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Praise the Lord. Sister Debbie, will you pray God's blessing on us tonight, please? Amen. Thank you. Please feel free to be seated. And please forgive me if I just kind of talk a little bit off the cuff tonight. I do have notes. Um, Robert Alter, I've spoken to you of him before, one of the preeminent Hebrew scholars of the time. In his translation of the Hebrew Bible, uh, translated this passage, As for me, how weighty are your thoughts, O God, how numerous their sum. Should I count them, they would be more than the sand. I awakened and am still with you. And I know this tracks very closely to the King James translation, but I wanted to call out the word weighty are your thoughts. And Robert Alter has a note that says the Hebrew root uh, YQR more often means precious, but the sense of weighty registers an Aramaic influence reflecting the late composition of this psalm. And so what he's explaining in this note is that he chooses to use the word weighty even though the, the root means precious because he wants to reflect some of the cultural influence uh, that was taking place or present in the time that the psalm was written. And so the reason I included this uh, admittedly poetic license of his is because the word translated into precious, it does entail precious. It does also have the connotation of weighty or heavy. It, it means more than simply valuable, it, uh, costly, estimable, splendid, having honor and dignity. It has a whole broader context than just meaning it has value. How precious also are your thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. How immense, how, how weighty, how, how they hang on to you, how they're filled with your honor and your dignity, how they, they show what you value in your thoughts to me. Now, if... You probably know by now, I think I've said it a few times, I have a deep and abiding love for mountains and oceans. The mountains, you know, they, they call to me, and I've got this desire to go and see what's on the other side of them. And inevitably, I'm disappointed because on the other side of them is just more of us. It's still full of people. It's still full of responsibilities. It's the same world as the one I was hoping to leave behind by climbing up the, the misty blue and getting to the top. And I love oceans because you can look out into forever. And the waves are just, their infinity, right? They just keep coming, sometimes peaceful, sometimes uproariously sometimes with fury, but always as a fundamental and irresistible force. And when you get out there in the waves and you just kind of float on your back and you feel the earth pick you up and drop you down and pick you up 
and drop you down. It is, it's the greatest thing ever, minus two or three things I can think of, one of which is gummy bears, but we'll, we'll leave that aside. But there's something just fundamental about the rise and the fall of the waves. And, and when you dive under and you see the impact it has on the, on, the, on the floor, even though you don't feel the wave as you're underneath it, you can still see the effect it has. And it reminds, it reminds me that God exists and acts throughout this world at an elemental level, deeper than we can perceive. And it's ever present and it's ever working. It is as irresistible as the waves against the sand of the beach. And I've always wanted to dive out and just swim to the bottom of the ocean and see what no human has seen. Unfortunately, I can hold my breath for three seconds and that's not sufficient to even get my full body underwater. Um, and even if I could, our bodies are not built to go that deep or be without oxygen for that long. And I couldn't see anyway because it's dark. So God doesn't want me to see that just yet, which I think is rude. But, you know, his precious thoughts for us prevent him from allowing me to swim to the bottom of the sea. So I have to rest in that, that understanding. And, and so there's that water. And I've always wanted to see what, what's at the bottom there. And, and then at the same time, standing on the shore, I look out to, to Never Never Land, and I, I want to go and see what's on the other side of that. And, and I'm always a little bit sad because we go to Hammonasset, and it's Long Island. It's kind of a letdown, you know, from, from what could be out. And you can't even look into forever because there's that little, anyway. Uh, when I'm at, an ocean, at a beach where there isn't a you know, this land rudely interrupting my view. Uh, you can stare out into, into seemingly forever, and I've always wanted to go to that point and see what's on the other side of that. And I was in on a whale watch once, and we got out to a point where no matter where you looked, all there was was water. And that was pretty awesome. And it was, it was freeing in a weird way, because I, I swim like, like a rock, and you know, I get seasick by thinking about being on a boat and yet being out there and being able to see horizon to horizon in 360 was just the most amazing thing. And of course, even there, I'm kind of saddened by the knowledge that if I got into the boat and I went forever in that direction, I would end up in another country, another land, that there is nothing on this planet that has not been discovered settled and you know firmly entrenched in this this world's hierarchy uh, the days of exploration and adventure seem to be pretty much over and i regret that so anyway the mountains you know they say maybe this time it'll be different and the oceans say maybe this time you'll find the unknown and they always call to me and on Mother's Day, I was pretty much done with this world, and my wife decided we should go sit on the beach for a while and then walk along the shore path. And She knows about how I find some peace as, as well as longing at the shore and thought that maybe if I took a nap on the beach, I would feel better. And so I sat there, and I looked across, and I was happy that I couldn't really see the sound. It was, it was kind of blocked out by the haze, and... Long Island's a very nice place, and I don't want it to be underwater. I just think it should move when I'm at the beach and then come back afterwards. Um, but as I'm laying on the blanket and trying to find a way that didn't hurt my backs or my hips or my ribs or make my abs, you know, uh, cramp up, I started reaching under the blanket and I started, you know, moving sand around because the great thing about sand is it moves. And so if you need it to be a little higher, you can shovel some sand there and it's higher. And if you need it to be a little lower, you can shovel sand out and it's lower. And I'm trying to figure, you know, so I'm reaching on the blanket, trying to make it a little more comfortable for me. Uh, but in doing so, that meant there was sand on the blanket. And you laugh, Sister Doris, because you know as well as I do what happens when there is sand on a blanket. It's now impossible to bring that blanket anywhere ever again for the rest of time without bringing sand along. 
it's like this interdimensional portal. You know, you, you, can, you can wave it out in the air for a week and a half in the middle of a, a tempest, and then you can go to the moon and pull it out, and there's sand all over the place like you never even... It, it's this... It's like glitter, but it's God's glitter, right? Uh, glitter is from the devil, sand is from the Lord. So I guess that's how we, we work it. But uh, so... I'm sitting there, I'm trying to brush the sand off, and every time I brush the sand off, more sand appears on the blanket. And I'm not stupid, I'm not that stupid. I know how to brush things off. And yet, even though I was being careful to lift my hand up, lift my hand up, I, I was still somehow getting more sand on the blanket than I was brushing it off. And it, and it was, it was, I was like, you know what, this is like my life. Isn't that how things are? Because I was grumpy, right? So right there, you gotta try to brush it off and more comes on. And it's not fair. And then I thought, you know how precious your thoughts are unto me, O oh God. How great is their sum. I can't even count them because they outnumber the grains of sand. And I was hoping to take a nap. So the following words, when I awake, I'm still with you, kind of struck a chord, because I hadn't much been feeling like I was with God or that God was with me. But this reverse reminded me that I was still where God was, that I can't go somewhere where God is not. And if I was smart and took a nap when I woke up, even though I would feel closer to him, in reality, that was just my perspective, and he is just as close before in my cranky state as he is after my nap state. And last Sunday, we talked a bit about the peace that passes understanding when I talked about the sandals of the gospel of peace. And it's a well-known, maybe not a fact, it, I'm going to claim it's a fact, that nature is therapeutic. Uh, when you get overwhelmed, walking barefoot on the grass is a good way to bring yourself back to reality and give yourself some perspective. What was that? <laughs> Depending on what you step in, yes, that's, that's correct, sister. You do have to, I said the grass, not in dog droppings. Yes. Uh, uh, in Psalms 19 says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And it goes on to say that the skies that display his craftsmanship speak day after day and night after night, declaring him, making him known to creation. That regardless of language, they communicate uh, him. In Romans 1.20 tells us that creation, that is nature, clearly shows the invisible things of God, including his eternal power and Godhead. And so I'm sitting there on the beach, futilely sweeping grains of sand off of this blanket, and I was reminded that God gave us creation as a means of knowing him, as a means of experiencing him. And I think this is why sunshine shining on your face and the chirping of birds and the sound of wind through the trees, the washing of the waves against the sand, how, how that brings such calm and comfort to a person because you get a sense of the, of the bigger picture. You get the sense of, of a timeless inevitability. Uh, you get the sense of the majesty of his creation and thus the majesty of the creator. And I think, this isn't, this isn't doctrine, this is me talking, but I think that on a subliminal, uh, subconscious level, we are reminded that God created the plants and the animals and the earth, wind, water to be an environment of life for humanity. And so I'm sitting at the beach thinking this, and I had to let go of some of my grumpiness and thank the Lord for the beauty of his creation. And even 
in the emptiness of the ocean surface. And I'm thinking about how amazing it would be to be in the middle of the ocean on a ship that has all the safety gear I need and is big enough that I don't get seasick and I won't sink in a, in a storm and, and all of that. And, but to be able to look into the sky and not see a plane flying by, to listen and not hear the neighbor's stupid beagle howling. Don't get me started on the neighbor's beagle. But to not hear the traffic from the highway, not to hear the train blasting its whistle so that you know that there's a train within 10 miles of your location. And that made me think of Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is to the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. And of course, if you look up this, this psalm, you'll read in verse 8 that the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. That means he hasn't hit us with the smite button that we deserve. For as high as heaven is above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. And skipping down to verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. So you and I might be grumpy and tired, but the Lord, he is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, overflowing with mercy. He will chasten, but he will not hold a grudge. He hasn't given us the punishments we deserve, but instead his mercy is as great as the heaven is high above the earth. If you're sitting out in the middle of the ocean and you looked out to the edge of the horizon, and I know the horizon is roughly 10 miles away, but, but think in terms of imagery rather than geography for now. Uh, if you look to the very edge of the earth as far as you can look, you would think that's a far place to have my sins. But your sins are even farther distant from you than that. He has washed your sins away and placed them somewhere as far away from you as the east is from the west. And that means that if you walk towards them, they will remain just as far away from you from the first step to your hundredth step. When he washes your sins away, you cannot approach them because they are as far from you as east is from west. You're getting the imagery here, I hope. Uh, you can go as far east as you want, and it's still east of you. And you can go even farther east, and where is it? It's east of you. We're on the east coast. I don't know what to make of that. We're, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna think too much into that imagery. And so I'm sitting there uh, thinking these things, you know, and the Lord is starting to kind of work in me. I'm starting to feel better, but I'm still trying to brush the sand off of, of the blanket. And with each brush, of course, more sand on the blanket. But now I start thinking about this. In, instead of in terms of annoyance, I start thinking this about this in terms of God's precious thoughts towards me. Right? They're precious. They're weighty. They are beyond number. They are of value and love. And if you brush one off, you're going to find three more. You think you've gotten rid of them all. And four days later, they're still pouring out of your shoes. God's thoughts for you infiltrate everything. The moment you recognize it, the moment you experience one, you can... I don't want to deal with God right now, but you're going to find out there's three more right where that one was. You're going to roll over in the middle of the night and something's going to be scratching you. What is that? Oh, it's God's love for me. I don't, want anything, I don't want to do anything with God. I want to follow my own thing. And you put on your shoe and there's something in your shoe and it's God's love for you. I thought that was pretty amazing. They're precious, they're weighty, 
They infiltrate everything, and you cannot escape his love even if you want to, even if you try to. And so I had my sons put some sand in the baggie for me. You see, this is like, I don't know how many handfuls, but it's not a lot. Uh, and you know how much effect my taking this from the, the beach had on the beach? None whatsoever. There's still plenty of sand there if you want to go and get your own baggie. You know. And honestly, I would, I would advise you, get a handful of sand, put it in a little bottle, and when you start feeling like poor old me, just shake that bottle a little bit. How precious are your thoughts to me, Lord. And they're more than all the sand. If this, if each grain of sand here equated to one of his precious thoughts for me, I would be thrilled. There's between one and 75 trillion here. Isn't this enough? Don't you think these would be enough thoughts for you? How much more? More than all the grains of sand. I'm going to get sand everywhere. I'm breaking the seal. God's love is going to be spreading. I'll share it with everybody. But just look right here. You can't see it, but look. You want to count that? I'm old. I need bifocals. I refuse to get bifocals. And I've got contacts, so I can't actually see what's in my hand here. But, you know, there's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I lost my count. Twelve, thirteen. You know, I can I can bore you trying to count just the the little pinch of sand I put in my palm here. So how much more is in this little baggie? How much more is on the beach at Hamanasset? How much more is on all the beaches? of the earth? How much more is in the Mojave Desert? How much more is in the Gobi Desert? How much more is in the Sahara? How much more is on in Egypt around the, uh, the pyramids and the, the cat-like thing? How, yes, thank you. How much more than we can imagine are his precious loving, valued thoughts towards you. I'm so tempted to give everybody tweezers and dump this out on the ground and, and have you all start picking them up saying his loving thoughts for me, but I feel like that might tend to go the other direction than rejoicing. But can, can you... <laughs> But can you imagine having to do that with just this baggie? You're getting the picture, right? I've got sand still in my hand. There's, now there's sand in my suit. I probably got sand in my shoe from that. It's just a, there's a, there's sand right. Her fault. You know, so I don't know why, but, but you see how it's everywhere. Once you recognize it, you start to see his love everywhere. Once you realize that I am surrounded by his precious thoughts, there's not a moment where he's not thinking those precious thoughts. There's not a place where he's not thinking those precious thoughts towards you. There is no end to sand in this world. And this is coarse sand. This is like practically gravel compared to some beaches I've seen. There's some sand that's so coarse and so fine. Maybe one of these will do a field trip. And uh, when one of us becomes a billionaire, you can fly us all out there. And uh, so, sons, you know what the, you know what the, the job is? But there's no end to this sand, and this is, this is coarse, junky sand. 
and more sand is created all the time as the wind and the waves rub up against whatever come, turns into sand, rocks, I guess. And, and his thoughts towards you personally. are more in number. There's no getting away from his love for you. And I know sometimes life is bad. Sometimes things are horrible. Sometimes there seems like there's no hope and there's no purpose. Sometimes you get tired of the pain that you carry around. But his precious thoughts towards you are as inescapable as if you soaked yourself in water and rolled naked down a sand dune in the Sahara, you would be finding those grains of sand for the next 30 years in all uncomfortable areas. His love for you is greater than all the sand. That's an image you didn't want right there. Psalm chapter 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me. He heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor, turn, or, nor such as turn aside to lies. Now listen to this. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And again, what kind of thoughts? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected, my, my hoped for the the reward end. So he heard our cry, pulled us out of that horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set our feet on rocks, because he loves us. And there's nothing you can do that's going to reduce or remove his love for you. Sister Doris, you said it, what shall separate us from the love of God? There's not a thing, nothing can separate us from his love. So, you know, don't fear, little children. God has not abandoned you. He will not forsake you. He has not left you. And his love for you is beyond imagining. And his love, like sand, gets in every nook and cranny of your life. It clogs up the destructive work of sin in your life. It gives you traction in the muck and the mire of the clay. And he created you for a purpose. And that purpose is much bigger than your purpose-driven life. It's much bigger than your calling here on this earth, but he has created you to have everlasting communion with him. He created you so you could have eternal fellowship with the one who is love, and you could show forth his praises unto creation. He loves you, and he's looking forward to that moment where he transforms you into what you are going to be, and you'll be with him forever. He's looking forward to that, just like you are. That's the expected end. That's his eager anticipation for his purpose for you and his thoughts of you and that reward. Brother Israel's going to have to forgive me, but you come on, you know, come on up and take a little finger of sand. It'll be in the carpet for the next 30 years, but you know what? God's love is greater even than the number of sand. This is just a couple of handfuls of sand from Hammonasset Beach. There's nothing mystical, nothing magical about sand. It's just little tiny rocks. 
some silica, maybe a seashell or something. I'm spreading God's love. But how precious are his thoughts? And how much more are they than you can count? Try to count what's in my hand. More than that. So I wanted to share that with you tonight. I know that I talked about his unfailing love a couple of weeks ago, and, and I know I've done the bag of sand thing, but as I was sitting there on the beach, it became crystal clear that he uses such a, an amazing example of how thoroughly his thoughts penetrate every aspect of our lives how immense they are. And that's all to you, personally. It's not towards humanity. It's towards you, personally. I want to share that with you tonight. Praise the Lord. Um, you're welcome to rejoice at the altar. You're welcome to grab a pinch of sand and try to count it. God bless you all.